Hi everyone! This video is in collaboration with six nurses from six countries and your questions from qualifications, salaries, benefits, and work-life balance will be answered. My name is Jen. I'm a Filipino registered nurse here in Australia. Hi, my name is Madam George and I'm a UK registered nurse. Hello everyone! Ako nga po pala si Ryan and I am a registered nurse dito po sa my Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Hi guys! My name is John Felix Martin and I'm a registered nurse here in New Zealand. I'm a registered nurse here in the USA. Hi Susan! My name is Maria Karen Guerrero Viola or just call me Carsi and I'm a Filipino nurse here working in Alemania, Germany. I started my application back in 2017. I was also a registered nurse in Singapore. I initially thought I could immediately work here as a nurse. Ang tinik ko lang na exam, English test, which is during that time 2017, IELTS pa yung popular na English test. So the IELTS, I completed other documents and then I submitted to AFRA, which is a governing body here. Parang PRC yung sa atin. Then I took a three month uh, bridging course, initial registration for overseas nurses. You can check out AFRA's website for the updated news. I have a detailed story dyan. I've listed down all the requirements on our website, www.tobingtogether.com. Yung language dito is English. That's my one of the requirements. Take an English test. For the IELTS, score of 7 on each section. So, nandito na po ako sa UK for over 10 years. And ang unang-una ko pong test noon is the IELTS Academic. From after the IELTS, uh, from uh, interview with the agency, it took us tatlong buwan lang, and nakalipad na po kami dito sa UK. Nag overseas nursing program kami, short uh, program lang yun for six months, and then we finally got our pin. Um, ngayon po, just to let you know, ang mga nurses ngayon when they come here in the UK, they take uh, not just the English exam, but they would also have the CBT and the OSCE tests. Nung panahon po namin, we had to do uh, what we call an overseas nursing program. Now, English. English po ang gamit na salita dito, but there are certain words that you'd have to learn pagdating nyo dito. See, every, every province kasi dito sa may Canada is different. Uh, dito ako sa may Alberta ngayon. So I always, kasi meron akong YouTube channel, it's Kegel TV. And I always tell my viewers, sa, may, sa mga subscribers ko na, always check the regulatory body ng province na pag apply mo ng nursing. Because every province is different. So my Quebec, it's different. So my Alberta, it's different. So my British Columbia, it's different. So just imagine there's different provinces and territories dito sa Canada. And they, and they have different regulations. So dito sa may Alberta, ang pagkakaalam ko, so, meron kami tinatawag na NNAS. Ayun yung National Nursing Assessment Service. So, kung ikaw ay isang registered nurse, internationally educated nurse sa Pilipinas, you have to submit your paper sa may NNAS. And if you qualify for refresher course, bibigyan ka nila ng palugit to uh, submit all the paperwork that you need, uh, like the IELTS. And then your transcript of records from the Philippines and then your PR li PRC license. And then, maghihintay ka lang siguro, I think the wait times to be able to get into the program, to the refresher program is one to two years. Medyo mahaba siya. Kaya yung iba, ang ginagawa is, nagpo-practical nursing muna. Uh, kasi mas mabilis yung pathway ng practical nursing kesa sa RN. It's because yung bridging ng RN is napakatagal, ang tagal ng wait time. Uh, I had to take the LPN and then bridge to RN online. Pero, tulad na sabi ko a while ago, you can submit your papers sa my NNAS, which uh, their, their website is nnas.ca and then you just have to take your IELTS, you just have to make sure that all your documents are complete, uh, the uh, transcript of records, your IELTS, and then your uh, nursing license. Uh, so, mga in approved nila for the pressure course kasi, you need to have at least 1700 hours. 1700 hours is like 1700 nursing work hours. Hindi counted yung mga volunteer sa Pilipinas. Kailangan work paid hours siya. So, kapag hindi ka pasok doon in the last four years, kasi kailangan nila ng 1700 hours in the last four years, is bibigyan ka nila ng, ng choice. Pwede ka mag RNAP. Ang RNAP is the challenge exam. Usually, they, uh, before kasi ang tawag nila is SEC exam. So, SEC exam consists of uh, parang two days, uh, not not parang, it's actually two days exam, two day exam siya. 
So yung first day of exam is skill. You, you need to perform the skill that is being asked. And then yung written exam. If you fail, they are not. You need to go back to zero years in the Canada. But if you pass, you go to the Beijing program. So ganun yung processing dito sa my country na. Uh, sa my so the first language here in New Zealand is English. So it's very easy to communicate with people, with doctors, with patients. And before I came here, um, I was actually a nurse in Ireland. So before practicing, you actually need to be registered here. And in order for you to be a registered nurse here, you need to do a bridging program or they called it a competency assessment program. But fortunately, they granted me the direct registration because I was a nurse in Ireland. So if you are a nurse in the UK, in Ireland, in Singapore, in the US, or in Canada, New Zealand Nursing Council would actually give you direct registration if you are approved or enough experience to satisfy that you're competent enough to be a nurse here. In order for you to qualify of being a nurse here, aside from being a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Nursing, you just need to take two examinations. That will be the NCLEX and the IELTS exam. For the NCLEX, waited for my eligibility for three months, applied through Northern Mariana Islands. Also, you need to take the English ex the English examination because that's the language, of course. Um, you need an overall band score of 6.5 with a speaking score of 7. So how did I become a registered nurse? Okay, so it took me around one year and a half to reach um, Germany. Uh, I remember back in 2013 where it was the, where the first um, advertisement that the Germany needed nurses was first released. I applied already. But unfortunately, I wasn't um, shortlisted in the first batch of passers. But on the, I guess on the third or fourth batch in 2016, I was called and I took this interview. I passed the interview and then after that, uh, we were endorsed to an, to an employer. And I also passed the interview for the, for, from the employer. And while doing this, um, we were taking an intensive training, language training program which took us like six months to eight months, I guess. So this language training program, we have to to take for we take the A1 level, the A2, the B1, and then the B2. So those are the language levels. And for us to be able to fly here, we have to pass the B1 exam or the B1 level. So I passed it, I flew to Germany, and then I started or I continued learning the language through their program there and it was all it was pure German and so I passed the B2 level and then from there that's the time we could take the recognition exam so the recognition exam is like the ano, eh, the nursing licensure exam in the Philippines guys how much do I earn as a nurse as a registered nurse dito sa my Calgary Alberta so guys disclaimer again dito sa my Canada every province is different so you have to check kung magkano ang rate ng every province Dito sa may Alberta, may tinatawag kami yung steps. Step 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, you accumulate, you accumulate your number of hours. So, every hours na na-accumulate mo, may, may step, step 2 ka na. For, for example, you, you, uh, ang, ang starting rate mo is for, uh, 39. Tapos, nakamili ka ng 1,700 hours, magiging step 2 ka, magiging 40, magiging 40 dollars ka, ganun. Sa mga hindi ako kilala, I'm a YouTuber and I'm open to my to my salary naman kasi I'm, I'm being transparent sa mga gusto magpunta ng Canada so pina, pinakita ko previously sa aking mga vlogs yung sahod ko and uh, as of my last paycheck yung kinsenas ko is inabot ako ng 3,200 that's net so as of my last paycheck ang gross is 84,786 sorry binabasa ko dito sa my computer screen so 84,786 so ang gross income ko as of last paycheck Noong November last week is 3,391,440 pesos. So, ang monthly mo, it depends whether I work OT, weekends, evenings, or nights. So, ang monthly gross ko is inaabot, monthly ha, inaabot ng 7,000 to 9,000 Canadian dollars. Ang palitan ng Canadian dollars ngayon is nakatak na sa 39 to 41. Uh, pero, misa kasi, siya sabi, ang Sinasabi ko na lang na times 40 para doon na sinsakto. So, 
sa, 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 sa Philippine peso, umaabot siya ng 280 to 360,000 per month. Okay? Ang annual estimate is 99k. 99,000 dollars. Canadian dollars. So, peso is 3,960,000. Okay? <laughs> So, tulad ng sabi ko kanina, salary differs in every province. And then, yung portability mo, kung may experience ka sa Pilipinas or experience ka sa ibang bansa, they, that will carry on. And then, ang undergraduate dito, undergraduate nurse, is sabihin na sa second year, third year, or fourth year, pwede ka na mag-work as a nurse right away. Ang undergraduate, ang rate nila is $20, $28 per hour, just imagine. Pero mas less yung Sorry. kanilang mga responsibilities. Graduate nurse, sabi, ibig sabihin, nakapagtapos ka ng nursing pero hindi ka pa nakapag-take ng NCLEX. Ang rate nila is $33 per hour. Pero ng registered nurse na wala pang experience, yung unang-una, fresh grad, is $37 per hour. And then yung maximum rate is $50 per hour. Alright, so how much does a nurse in Germany earn? So, there's no difference if you're a Filipino nurse or a German nurse or other foreign nurse, okay? We earn the same, but it could differ from the state to state or hospital to hospital. But just to give you a range, probably in peso, around 150 to 200. And it could increase then if you stay in the same hospital and then every year you get an increase. How about my salary range? So, I live here on a low cost of living in a small town here in North Dakota. And my salary ranges from 180,000 to 200,000 pesos. Net pay. And take note guys, I'm a night shift nurse. And I do work every weekends. So your salary will be different if you're or in a state that has a higher cost of living. Pay every weekends is higher compared to the regular weekdays. Take note also guys that you have a lot of bills that you need to pay monthly. So magkano po ang sweldo ng isang UK nurse? Uh, compare po natin into Philippine pesos din ano. So on the average around uh, pagdating nila dito, it's about 23,000 pounds ang entry ng isang nurse dito. 23,000 pounds in a year. Kung i-convert ko siya sa peso, that's around 1.4, maybe 1.5 uh, million pesos depende sa exchange rate na, no? pero ngayon po syempre mas matagal na ako iba na rin yung ban ko hindi na ako sa NHS but what we are focusing on is ano yung ini-expect ng mga nurses pagdating nila dito so if you wanna know kung magkano yung sweldo ko I have a different uh, video in my channel for that um, I did mention na, na confidential yung uh, aking sweldo dahil po I work now in a corporate setting but still I am about my salary I'm not yet that comfortable to share with you guys my exact salary but I can share with you how much um, a fresh grad or a nurse with one year experience would earn so they would probably earn about 1.6 million pesos here annually so hindi pa deducted yung taxes and cost of living if you have like five years experience in the Philippines or in Saudi or in the Middle East, they would actually consider it. So it's a good, good place to work here in New Zealand because um, hindi ka babalik from zero. Fortunately, I cannot divulge the exact amount I am earning because for confidentiality. You can check naman yung pay guide as a fair work. Uh, that gov that au do naka specify yung pay ng mga nurses depende kung anong level of nurse ka na o kasi nagwork ako sa Philippines ng 5 years and then another 5 years sa Singapore credit naman yung total working experience ko kaya nababayaran naman ako ng tama pero you can check sa payscale.com ang range is about $26 to $42 so, hourly naman yung rate dito. Hindi pa rin sa facility kasi minsan nagbibigay pa rin sila ng mas mataas dun sa range ng payscale.com. Iba rin yung weekend rate, iba rin yung overtime rate, additional fees din yun. Of course, taking into consideration the tax as well. For or less, mga 30% yung tax and eh, malaki talaga yung tax dito. In short, nurses pay here is considerably good. So what do I do as a nurse? I'm a nurse here in Germany for almost three years now. I am working in a university hospital here in Freiburg, Germany. It's a semi-private hospital. 
and the patients that I'm dealing with are patients that are post-op um, post-operative uh, from the brain surgery from spinal surgeries and so neurosurgery department and so far I'm very satisfied I'm very happy with my workplace and I really think that tatagal pa ako sa workplace ko but of course there are difficulties that we experience kahit saan naman, diba? even in the Philippines we always have to be there for the patient Okay, even if they don't need us, we have to attend to them and ask what they need. Assisting patients to stand up. Since post-op nga yung patients namin, we help them stand up, we help them walk, um, we help them with almost their activities, of the, uh, with their daily living activities. We give infusions, we give medicines, we do procedures, we insert letters. Um, swero, but most of the stations in Germany doesn't allow nurses to insert swero. But in my station, in the neurosurgery, we are the ones who do that. What makes it difficult is the language. So everything else. I've been here in New Zealand for about eight months, and I'm an orthopedic nurse. And I'm actually enjoying my job because I actually have time to have a conversation with my patients. And I think. I'm giving them the standard care that they actually need and I'm very confident that I'm able to finish my job properly because before you know you guys would know yung mga nag sa public hospital na mamadali kayo or alam nyo may mga hindi kayo nagawa after the ship here I'm very happy naman well stopped naman kadalasan syempre minsan pag may nag leave or may nag absent unexpectedly of course, you'll be understaffed, but most of the times, well staff coming. Before, when I was in the Philippines, I've been a medical surgical nurse for two years. And then I applied here in the U.S. and I was hired in a nursing home. And I've been here for 10 months now. The job is challenging, of course, because in a nursing home, we don't have a nurse-patient ratio. Um, the ratio that I have right now is 1 is to 50 plus patients, especially when you're a night nurse, you're the only nurse at night. So it will be different if you're working uh, as a day shift. It will be different in a hospital setting because they're following the ratio like 1 is to 5. Even if you have a lot of patients in a nursing home, that is manageable because you have CNAs that can help you. You have LPNs. The patients are more stable and um, the work is already over. Well, I've been here in the UK for, for 10 years. You know? I first came here with the NHS. So when I started in the NHS, I worked in the wards. Dito po, 1 is to 6 uh, normal kong hawak in the day and then in the evening, 1 is to 12 pwede magdobian pero at both instances, meron kang healthcare assistant to help you, assist you sa pagbigay ng care sa kliyente. NHS total care yan. When I say total care, hindi lang medication, carry out of orders. Meron din obviously yung hygiene and nutrition ng pasyente you look after them as well. Ngayon po, pag uh, NHS, kailangan medyo on the go ka, involved ka sa care, kasi nga total care, and dito matcha challenge yung talagang nursing training mo. HDU, um, ang HDU nga pala is high dependency unit, which is a step down from intensive care. Um, dito po is 1 is to 3. Uh, pag uh, mabigat ang pasyente mo, 1 is to 2, pwedeng 1 is to 1. Now, ito na po ang uh, trabaho ko ngayon. I work for a nurse ex as a nurse examiner for insurance. Dito naman, another set of skills. And dito, ang what is paramount is customer service naman. Napaaganda po ng avenues natin to work here in the United Kingdom. Isip ko yung registration ko na January 2018. And then after that, nag-apply na ako. I started working April 2018. Work muna ako nun sa part-time due to care arrangement issues. Nag-resign din ako dun sa first job ko. Thankfully, I was just recently hired. Newbie pa rin ako, so I'm still starting my working journey. Currently, full-time nurse, cath lab uh, facility. With regards to workload, personally, as compared to Philippines and Singapore, 
I feel na medyo mas light ang workload ko sa Australia. Siyempre, that's my personal opinion lang. And other nurses may have different views as well. Hinding iba't ibang adjustments, especially kapag nagsastart ka na. Yung routine, being aware of the Australian healthcare system, like yung language. Parang mga times na hindi ko maintindihan yung mga sinasabi nila or yung mga terms nila. And, um, ayun, nag-ano lang ako, pardon? Pardon? Kasi <laughs> tanong. Which is okay lang naman kasi tayo kasi sa Philippines, sanay tayo na American accent. I ako as an LPN before and ngayon as a registered nurse. Yung scope of practice ng LPN dito sa may Alberta is huge. Really huge. Like, pareho na siya halos ng RN. At pinagkaiba niya lang talaga is yung salary. Ang, ang LPN dito sa Canada is, ang rate niya is nag-start ng 36, ang RN nag-start ng 38, 37 point something, 37 point eight. What do I do as a nurse, as an emergency nurse, no? It's very, very stressful, but it's very, very fulfilling. It's because you, you, you're trying to help people na they're very sick, especially in Emerge, right? They come to Emerge to, to go balibuto yung mga naiisip ko tuwing papasok ko sa work ko ano bang ano bang next na na makikita ko pasyente may gunshot wound ba or yung tipo bang mag mag code na mapupunta ba sa Risa's room Risa's station room so so ito ano sa emergency they'll come to triage magbibigay sila ng CETA score it's the Canadian triage assessment score and then they had to withdraw their blood because meron kaming lab technician sa hospital but in emergency we have to do we have to draw their own blood so meron kaming policy and protocol sa emergency that we as nurses can actually put the orders in behalf of the doctors as per policy and procedure for example chest pain chest pain kami na mag, mag maglalagay ng lights troponin and CBC Pwede kami na magko-collect. So, kailangan alam namin yung tubes na color. Repet the ECG, tapos we need to collect uh, for old ECGs. And then, we need to start an IV. And then, we need to run TKVO. And then, we, and then we wait for the doctor's order. And then, if the patient is like having chest pain, we, we can order like aspirin and then we can give the aspirin. We can order it like as, as nurses do some emergency. And then we have to wait for the doctor's order for chest x-ray or, or, uh, or CT scan or, you know, and then... And then we send them for x-ray and all that stuff. So, here overall, as a registered nurse emergency, we do everything. So, uh, blood transfusion, what? basta lahat. It's really, um, it's, it's broad and uh, nakaka-stress. Yun lang masasabi ko. As in... So, what are the benefits po of working in the United Kingdom? Number one is healthcare. Healthcare po sa uh, the United Kingdom is free to the NHS. The NHS promises to be free on point of care lalo na sa emergency so wala tayong kailangan isipin na problema kung halimbawa may long term illness or let's say emergency procedures na kailangan ng NHS po laging nandyan so that's one good benefit po dito sa United Kingdom second naman po on our list is the annual leave Ang annual leave dito or siguro sa Pilipinas tawag natin vacation leave is, quite, is very um, generous. Annually, at least sa NHS, 7 weeks po yan. Entitled kang gamitin within 1 year. Maganda rin pong uh, benefit dito sa UK is the sick leave. Ang sick, ang sick leave po dito, umaabot ng 6 months. Pero fair warning po, ang sick leave po is dahil may sakit ka na medyo long term. Hindi po dahil gusto mo lang magkaroon ng sakit, hindi ka napapasok. Hindi po. Ang sick leave po, mayroong certification yan from your GP. Then we move on to maternity leave. Ang maternity leave po, dito maabot hanggang 12 full months. Okay? Yan po. Ganun po katagal. Pero huwag kayong mag-alala kung kayo po ay tatay, meron din po paternity leave. Kaya na po, paternity leave, around 2 weeks lang. But still, at least hindi tayo nakakalimot. Normally, ang working hours is 38 hours per week. May times din na kailangan mag-overtime. Other hospitals na merong options na yung overtime mo is either isasama sa sweldo mo or time in lieu, additional hours for a year. Of course, you are entitled to an annual leave. Leave is um, accrued. You earn yun, depende na sa number of hours na um, pinaso. Entitled to sick leave. Kung may sakit yung family member, you can up to be on leave and file a carer's leave. Maternity, medyo wala pa akong idea kasi hindi pa namin nagagamit. Yes, we do have benefits, of course. Health insurance, dental, 
uh, vision, insurance, we have paid time off, PTO or leaves, also paid sick leaves, you have what they term as 401k or the retirement plan. Definitely, there are overtime pay, holiday pay, night differential, and evening shift also has differential pay. So what are the employment benefits? Uh, working hours per week, maternity, sick pay, overtime. So, as a PR in Canada, as a permanent resident in Canada, and if you're a citizen, health is free. So, if you have merch, you don't have to pay. You need to see your family doctor, you don't have to pay. Do blood work, ECG, uh, x ray, meds, admis admission to the hospital, bed to bed, you don't have to pay. You don't have to sagot lahat ng government yun. Uh, so, kapag na-admit ka, wala kang charge. Uh, kapag na-discharge ka, and if you need to have a prescription, doon ka lang mag-charge. But, since ako, nag-work ako sa my government, and my employee uh, pays 80% of my med, med prescription, so 80% of it, and then ang binabayan ko lang is 20%. And then so dental, that includes dental, massage, chiropractor, and my and yung prescriptions nga. So working hours per week varies. Kasi I swap my shifts a lot. It will be at least 40 hours per week. Pag lumagpas ka ng 40 hours per week mo, kailangan mag-overtime ka na. So, ang overtime, ang, that's times 2 ng sahod mo. So, for example, kumikita ka ngayon ng 40 hours per, $40 per week. Oh, sorry, $40 per hour. So, kailangan babayari sa $80 per hour na pag overtime ka. So, yung shift differentials meron kami tinatawag dito. Yung evening shift pag nagtrabaho ka, that's additional $2.75 per hour. And then, night shift pag nagtrabaho ka, that's additional $5 per hour. And then, pag nagtrabaho ka ng weekends, $3.25. Okay? Get. So, yung maternity dito, tinanong ko yung kibigan ko. Sabi niya, it's one year, and then meron kami tinatawag na paternal packing mag-leave. And that's also, uh, he's also entitled for six months. Parang ganun. So, hindi ako masyadong clear doon. Kasi wala naman akong anak. But anyway, you own yung so, push there are lots of benefits in our company. Um, if you reach your second year anniversary, they would actually pay half of your health insurance if you would like to get a uh, health insurance. But cover ka naman dito ng government if you know if you get ill or sick or you get into an accident. It's free. Sick pay, uh, we do get 10 paid sick leave every year. Annual leave would be around 6 weeks per year and you will get extra leave if you do a lot of night and afternoon shifts. If you work on a holiday, you'll get a loo day. And maternity leave, I'm not really familiar with the maternity leave here because I'm not going to benefit from it. Over time, you would be paid twice of your hourly rate. So if you're like earning $30 per hour, you will earn $60 per hour. But of course, there's tax. Pa, so What I love about working here in Germany is that like for example, the benefits are really nice. So I pay insurances that includes the pension, the health insurance, and so whatnot. Now, uh, for the pension, if we get old and we want to, you know, retire, we will get money, and that is really nice. Okay, no, okay, talaga. And for example, we get sick, we need to go to the hospital, uh, a procedure must be done. We are covered. It's all covered, guys. Ang saya saya. Kasi talagang hindi kami mama problema dyan. Lahat are required to get health insurance. Now, those are the benefits. Like, for example, another benefit is, for example, you're a mom, you're a parent, and you have children, and then they can go to school for free. Everything is free. Now, if you're a parent too, your tax will be lowered, and then you will also get kindergeld or what they call ch children's allowance. You will get extra money for your children. And talagang okay. Now, when it comes to work, they are really employee-friendly, very pro-employee. Now, in our hospital, I work 38.5 hours a week. Now, I really enjoy that because sometimes I just work two days a week, and then after that, a long off, and then seven days. Basta mo lang ma-accomplish yung 38.5 hours per week namin. It's okay na. And other leaves, for example, vacation leave. 
um, we get 30 days leaves for our vacation that is paid leaves as well and what's good about here in germany is that if you're sick you're sick if you're having a headache and you feel like you cannot go to work because it's really it's really bothering you it's giving you a hard time you can call in sick and no one would ever question you because sick is sick okay now if you feel like um if you are on your period and you're really having bad day um getting cramps and all you can call in sick okay if you're starting to get flu or a little bit um sipon or colds and it's really bothering you too you're having a hard time to breathe and that means you're gonna be um not fit to work then you can call in sick so after three days if you're still sick you can go to the doctor and get a medical certificate and even extend your sick use which is paid okay um for other um types of benefits like for example night shifts we have night differentials um overtimes either it will depend on the employer either they will pay for that or you can get extra day offs for overtime but you know overtime is not also here in germany they do not actually allow it they're very punctilious or very on time if your shift ends at 2 15 you will have to go home at 2 15. why you can just leave your workmates and then because it's your right <laughs> Thursday, may tinatawag na long shopping. Mga malls ay open until 9pm. Otherwise, the rest of the days, until 5pm lang. For us, sa family namin, we appreciate yung ganun kasi parang you tend to have more family time. Hindi ka na magkatambay sa mall. So, ang option mo is to have dinner with the family. Like in the Philippines, family-oriented din sila. Ang maganda din dito sa Australia is they promote outdoor activities. Free yung mga parks, free yung mga beach. You can just bring food. And libre na yung pupuntahan mo. Trip yung mga long drive, camping. If you wanna check out some places to go in Australia, uh, just check out our website. How is work-life balance? Mahirap. Kasi when I when I came to Canada, wala akong family. And nandito si Mami Tadi ngayon kasi I sponsor them. And I support them. And without, without me, if I don't work full-time, wala nga nga as oh, okay na ako uh, nakabili na ako ng bahay on my own it's a brand new house uh, nagawa ko na yung gusto ko I'm a vlogger ito na yung gusto ko eh yeah. dati pinapangarap ko na maging vlogger and uh, I have my own car my parents are here I have my own family I have my partner I have my puppies sometimes it's really hard to travel kasi we, kasi we have two dogs Ina, ang ginagawa ko pag day off I try to have time with my family we try to watch, we try to go out, uh, stroll some mall, we try to watch movie together. So, work-life balance po dito sa United Kingdom, uh, napaaganda po. Um, dahil po dito, ang um, normal annual leave or normal vacation leave ng mga tao is about seven weeks. So, ang haba po, no? And you can't really take that those seven weeks in all in one go. Very special instances lang yan ang yayari. So on the average, you can save up to two, three, or even four weeks, and then you could do something about that. So ano yung work-life balance don? Karamihan po ng mga Pilipino umuwi sa Pilipinas annually dahil nga meron sila three to four weeks na hindi nila ginagamit rin ni reserve nila sa ganon. So marami kang leave. Natapos mo na yung three or four weeks mo sa Pilipinas, mayro ka pang isa or dalawang linggo. Napakadaming pwede mong gawin. If you want to stay local, ang United Kingdom is a very beautiful country. In fact, you can cross England, punta ka ng Scotland if you want to, punta ka ng Wales, punta ka ng Northern Ireland. Lahat yan, they have their own charms and their own beauty. But, kung gusto mo naman mag-abroad, pumunta ng Europe. Amsterdam is an hour away, Paris, France is an hour away. Gusto mo mas malayo ng konti, Spain, Portugal, two to three hours. Italy is not that far as well. So, marami pwedeng puntahan. Okay, talking about work-life balance, ako, yan ang pinaka-favorite ko talaga dito sa Germany. Super favorite ko. Because I can really attest and tell you that the work-life balance here in Germany is really felt. I really enjoy it. I enjoy it. Sobrang work-life balance, totoo yan. Because um, even if I just have like three days off, I can go and travel to wherever I want within Europe or even outside Europe. 
because we have a very good visa na I can, you know, if even if I just have one day off, I can go to Switzerland and just take the bus and go to Switzerland and do wow. there. What if I have, you know, more day offs? Um, since the community is growing here, I invite other friends from other cities in Germany and then we go to different countries. And that's what I really enjoy. Okay, like for example, if I want to go to the Philippines, I take my one month off in the Philippines. And if I want, if I have seven days off, I just go to Belgium. Diba? Ang parang saya, travel is life. So, yun nga, part, I work hard, party harder. Travel harder. Ang motto. Work life balance here is good. As I've mentioned before, you have six weeks annual leave and you'll have more leave if you do a lot of shifts, night shifts. But traveling is not as good as Europe because New Zealand is very isolated and the plane ticket would be expensive just traveling outside the country. But if you would travel around New Zealand, it would be cheap and there's a lot of things to see. Um, there's mountain ranges beaches white or black um, there are sand dunes there's ski resorts and Auckland is beautiful it's not too big it's not too small it's perfect for um, everyone who doesn't like crowd or too much hustle <laughs> it's just far away from other countries but it's near the Philippines so it's good work-life balance definitely there is because in my case, I only work three 12-hour shifts in a week, so I'm getting four days off. So, um, you can definitely travel to other states. However, if you choose to travel by land, it will be a long drive. And I can still hang out with friends, um, do whatever I'd like to do. Yeah, and I can vlog my experiences here too. So. I do have work like life balance. If you want to know more uh, more information or a detailed information on how I got here in the USA, including the process and application, please subscribe to my channel at Virtual Beauty Me. Thank you so much.